Welcome back guys, you already know what this setup means, right? It is time for another monthly reading wrap up. But I'm actually pre-recording this since I will be moving to Spain tomorrow, which has not quite hit yet, but while I still got all these books that I read this month right here, I will already record this and like the other books I will be reading while in Spain, I'm gonna like film that part differently. You will see at the end of this video. Okay, this month we started off strong. The first two books I read this month I absolutely loved. The first one being The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Um, he's the author of The Silent Patient, as it says right here, a book which has been raved about on book YouTube and I have not yet read this but after reading this I definitely want to pick up the other one as well. So this is only his second novel ever written and it is a dark academia murder mystery thriller taking place in Cambridge University. I loved it a lot. Um, it has parts of like Greek mythology interwoven in it because one of the murder suspects is the enigmatic handsome Greek mythology professor at Cambridge. Like this was like a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. I loved it. The, the chapters are super short which makes you churn through this like crazy. I also gave this to my mom after I read it and she's a slower reader than I am but even she read this in like a weekend because it is kind of addicting. Um, the only reason why I reduce those like 0.5 stars is because I'm not going to spoil anything but there's a certain theme or trope involved in the solution of this novel that if that theme is part of any novel, I cannot 100% love it. I can't say anything else because otherwise it would spoil shit and I don't want to do that. But um, I mean, I still really liked it. It was a solid read for sure. Moving on to the second book I read this month. That was The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatsushi. Um, this is a Japanese take on Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None um, murder mystery. It takes the story uh, to Japan and the protagonists are the members of um, Kyoto University's murder mystery writing fan book club basically and they go to an island where a few months prior a murder or like a, a double, triple, quadruple murder had been taken place um, and while they're there they start dying and it's like the same trope of okay who's killing these students and what is going on i really love this 100 percent as well i think this would even be like a five out of five stars like that this that it took like this agatha christie trope and um kind of like change of course it's not like the same storyline as in that agatha christie one but it's like the same setup of as like these people being on an island and they cannot escape and they start dying i love that okay Moving on to the poetry piece I read this month, and that was The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. Uh, that is the inaugural poem that has been read at President Biden's inauguration in November. Is that right? Mm. I liked it. I don't know. The only thing I can say about this is pretty much the contents of this book literally fit on a single piece of paper not doubly printed so instead of uh, spending 12 bucks on this quote-unquote book i might recommend you to just like watch a youtube video of the actual recital at the inauguration i think that would be maybe a better way of spending your time and money um but wait i can actually read to you my favorite parts of this poem okay the first first part i like very much is We've braved the belly of the beast, we've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. Okay, okay. The second one is this one. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. That one I also really liked. And then at the very end, I think it was, when day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Yeah, I liked it fine, but yeah, considering this like literally is a single piece of paper all in one, because like these side these pages aren't even like fully printed, 
maybe just like read it online or like list, watch the inauguration video, whatever. But I liked it. I liked it fine. Okay, then moving on. I read Sally Rooney's Normal People, the book that has been raved about for months or years or however long this has been out. Um, this is a story like, I'm sure you don't even need to hear the plot because you've already read it, but whatever. Um, so this um, tells the story of soulmates, as I would like to describe it as. We're following a, a boy and a girl uh, from when they like get to know each other in their years of adolescence during high school. And we follow them and their relationship throughout the years while they're finishing high school and then go off to college. And I think the story ends when they're like about to finish college or like when they're about to start their master's programs. And um, yeah, we follow their relationship and their struggles in life. At one time, they're just friends. At another time, they're friends with benefits. At even another time, they're like a proper couple. And they, they fall in and out of contact throughout the years, but they never quite seem to be able to stay apart because, as I said, they're kind of like soulmates. And in that, I thought it was like a sweet and uh, relatable way of portraying a relationship that maybe you're not going to be in contact 100% throughout the years, but you will have falling outs and then you will be there for each other again. But um, I don't know, at the same time, I was not as obsessed with this book as like so many people seem to be. But I think there's another Sally Rooney coming out in September and I will be picking that up. Like I would be willing to pick that up for sure. It's not like this book put me off of old Sally Rooney's work uh, or anything like that. It was completely fine, but Personally, I did not find myself to be obsessed with this. Okay, then moving on to Don't Point That Thing At Me by Kirill Bonfiglioli. I made a separate video for this, the first episode of my cinematic book club. I'm gonna link it up above and down below, so check that out. Uh, just like a few words, this basically is a mixture of P.G. Woodhouse and Johnny English. You wanna know more about that? That sounds intriguing to you? Check out that other video. Okay, and now last but not least, I only finished this last night, is Olive by Emma Gannon. Um, I hope to publish a separate reading vlog for that before I upload this, so I'm gonna leave it up above and down below as well. Uh, but basically this tells the story of a early 30s year old woman in England and her decision to, like her active decision not to have children and the struggles that comes with struggles as in having to explain herself to her friends, family, to society basically because of this unspoken rule that still is kind of out there that wanting and having children is still like the norm that most people follow and once you do not apply to the norm anymore you have to explain yourself basically and the struggles that comes with the struggles of falling out with your friends because of that decision at times, the struggles of having to end an otherwise very good relationship because the partners involved want different things, as in like one of them wants children, the other one does not. Um, so yeah, the all the struggles it comes with making this decision of not wanting kids, very relatably narrated in this story. I liked it a lot. I mean, I am in my early 20s, I'm not yet thinking about having children or not having children, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but still, I found this to be, yeah, very relatable in a sense. Plus, no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, whether you want kids, whether you don't want kids, whether you're like neutral about it, whether you don't know, like all sides and all its like benefits and disadvantages, all of the prejudices that come with either side um, are at one point of this book pointed out or like equally um highlighted so like this book is not like an a manifesto for not wanting to have kids is the right thing to do like this book points out that both of those decisions are equally worthy are equally meant to be respected by everybody else none of them is like the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do yeah I'm just saying that right here because I will have the other reading blog up, I hope. So yeah, but I can only really recommend this, especially because that is not a topic that is often talked about, I think, or like at least without actively doing research on it. Um, it doesn't seem like it is a topic that is openly and often talked about, I thought. And especially I had never encountered it in like a book that is solely about that subject. So that was very 
fascinating. Okay, so those were the six books I read um, until right now. The other books I will now introduce to you, I will be reading while I'm on the road off in Spain already. So I guess I will introduce them to you via voiceover. So I'm handing over. So this is the only other book I managed to finish this month. It is a adventure novel taking place in the Peruvian and Chilean Andes. It is about a professor and a group of students um, working on an excavation site there. And one day they discover this secret underground chamber and because their exit gets blocked off, they have to go through it. And yeah, they basically go on this adventure. That part I actually liked fine, but then at like after one third or like the half of the novel, supernatural elements started to well be involved in the story and that's not my kind of thing at all so yeah be aware of that okay you guys i'm about to check out of my hostel in madrid and i'm going to leave this one here i finished this on i think the first night i came here and i am definitely not going to read it again i did not enjoy it all that much um and this way my luggage will finally be a tad lighter, so goodbye. This is another book I managed to pick up this month, but I literally only started it, so I will include that in my August reading wrap up. Okay, guys, back me again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and you found something you liked. Check out the other videos I linked down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!